I want to talk about another example of U.S. meddling and interference here in Southeast Asia. I want to talk about the type of organizations and individuals involved. And I want to talk about how they're trying to be more careful about the public understanding who they work for and where they get their money from and how, regardless of that, you can still do a little bit of digging and find out. So I want to point your attention to this article that I was sent. People were asking me here in Thailand, there's a, a local news story developing about an organization called 4C meddling in Thailand's internal political affairs. Uh, 4C, F-O-R-S-E-A stands for forces of renewal in Southeast Asia. And yet the entire website is in English. And if you look at their About Us webpage and you scroll down, it's all meaningless platitudes about human rights, freedom and democracy. There's no mention at all about who funds them. And these type of organizations that claim to talk about and stand for all of these wonderful principles surely are aware of how important transparency is to all of this. And if they lack transparency, it isn't because they don't understand the importance of transparency. It's because they understand that if they are transparent, people will see through them and will understand what they truly are. Let's get back to this news article, though, that they posted on their 4C website. It says, 4C statement regarding Thailand's top news's baseless news story about the abolition of the monarchy in Thailand. And they're talking about a founding retreat for 4C in Paris in 2018. And Top News, a Thai media organization, has talked about how at this meeting they were talking about Thailand and undermining the Thai monarchy. And 4C is claiming, no, this never happened. And yet they admit that Powin was there. He's actually a co-founder of 4C. And anyone who is aware of Powin will know that he is a, a fringe opposition figure in, in Thailand. He's actually not even located in Thailand. He lives abroad. And if you just do a Google search, an image search of just his name alone, nothing else, other than pictures of himself, you are going to see pictures of him involved in activities attacking and undermining the Thai monarchy. It is all he does. That is the only thing he does. So there's no way he co-founded 4C and part of its agenda isn't attacking the Thai monarchy. And if you look at the bottom of this article claiming that 4C had nothing to do with attacking the Thai monarchy, you will notice that there are nothing but other articles about attacking the Thai monarchy here. Why Thais are losing faith in the Thai monarchy. Let's open this one with about Powen himself. Thailand's ruling junta backed by a military monarchy network faces rising opposition and is now focusing on restricting social media over physical crackdowns. This is exactly what Top News claimed 4C was doing. That's exactly what 4C is doing if you just go visit their website. And yet they have this ridiculous article here claiming that uh, Top News is out of line by accusing them of pursuing an anti-Thai monarchy agenda. There's also something else bizarre mentioned in this article. It says, 4C was birthed at the aforementioned meeting outside Paris in the summer of 2018. Among the participants at this founding meeting were civil society activists, socially conscious entrepreneurs, and engaged scholars and artists from Thailand, Myanmar, Malaysia, Singapore, and Cambodia. Okay, all of these countries are located in Southeast Asia. This is a Southeast Asian organization. That makes sense. But then it also says, and France, and France. What does France have to do with Southeast Asia? Aside from its long history of colonizing the region, of killing the people who live here, exploiting the region's resources, and then fighting an extremely bloody war alongside the United States to cling to its power here, the Vietnam War. This was originally a war between the people of Vietnam and their uh, French colonial oppressors. They were throwing them out of the region. The US joined the conflict. It dragged on for almost 20 years. Millions of people were killed. Not only was Vietnam bombed, but so were Laos and Cambodia, all three French colonial possessions in the past. Uh, the war was so extensive, so destructive, that to this day, unexploded ordnance dropped by the US are killing people in all three countries. So keep that in mind. That's what France has to do with Southeast Asia. The fact that this so-called Southeast Asian organization, 4C, is meeting together in France is an insult to all the people here in the region, Southeast Asia, 
who fought to throw off Western colonialism. The irony of Forsey claiming to fight for freedom and democracy in Southeast Asia while conspiring with the Western powers still interested in reasserting their control over the region is off the charts. Now, who wrote this article for Forsey? It is Muang Zarni. Muang Zarni, he is on the board of directors of Forsey. Here's his profile on Forsey's website. It says he's a UK-based exiled Burmese scholar and activist, co-founder and general secretary of Forsey. He left for the United States on the eve of Burma's 1988 nationwide uprising. So the 1988 uprising in Myanmar, which they're calling Burma, the, the British colonial name for Myanmar, that uprising was sponsored by the U.S. government. It was Aung San Suu Kyi, International League for Democracy political party, trying to seize power in Myanmar. The U.S. has built up Aung San Suu Kyi's political movement, and at one point they even managed to install her into power. Aung San Suu Kyi has literally traveled to Washington, D.C. on a number of occasions, and more specifically to meet with the National Endowment for Democracy, the U.S. government's regime change organization. They've given her awards for her obedience and role in helping advance U.S. foreign policy objectives in Southeast Asia, and more specifically in her home country of Myanmar. His profile continues. If you come down here, it says in 1995, Zarni co-founded the Free Burma Coalition. What was that? If you do a Google search of the Free Burma Coalition, you'll see multiple U.S. congressional hearings pop up where their representatives spoke in front of U.S. Congress. There's this one here from 2003, a review of the development of democracy in Burma. And if you come down here, you will see this representative from the Free Burma Coalition admitting to their role in advancing U.S. government interests in Myanmar. It says, one of the ways we are working to bring change to Burma is through information. The National Endowment for Democracy gives money to organizations along the Thailand-Burma border that help to get information inside the country, including this newspaper, The New Era Journal. Every month, we, so this is a representative from the Free Burma Coalition, we distribute thousands of copies inside Burma through a courier network. We are also very grateful for services from the Voice of America and Radio Free Asia. And these are media platforms created by the U.S. government, funded and directed by the U.S. government to spread U.S. narratives uh, around the world and more specifically when radio Free Asia is involved here in Asia, including Southeast Asia. So that's the Free Burma Coalition he helped co-found in 1995. They are an extension of the U.S. State Department and advancing U.S. interests in Myanmar. Down here, it talks about him working with U.S. State Def Department officials. And down here, it talks about he has held research leadership and visiting fellowships, including at the Rockefeller Foundation's New Next Generation Leadership, Georgetown Leadership Seminar, Harvard, London School of Economics in Oxford. And they talk about how he's written for all these Western journals and publications, and he's appeared on CNN, the BBC, and all of these other Western media outlets. That is who Mang Zarnia Forsi is. He is a lifelong tool of U.S. foreign policy. He claims that he's working for freedom, human rights, and democracy, when in reality he is working with and for the U.S. government, the absolute worst violator of human rights and national sovereignty on Earth today. What the U.S. accuses Russia and China of in fiction pales in comparison to what the U.S. has openly done in front of the world. The U.S. invasion of Afghanistan or Iraq or Syria alone, let alone when you look at all of these collectively, uh, just alone, each one of these are far worse than anything the U.S. even accuses Russia and China of. In Iraq, the U.S. deliberately lied about its pretext to invade. They murdered a million Iraqis. Before they invaded, they starved to death half a million Iraqi children. We have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children then died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? 
I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. They occupy Iraq to this day. They also occupy neighboring Syria. They had occupied Afghanistan for almost 20 years. And from Libya and North Africa to Afghanistan and Central Asia and everywhere in between, the U.S. has caught a swath of death and destruction. This is who Meng Zarni is working for. This is who he claims he's working with to help spread peace, democracy, human rights, and freedom around the globe. It's very important to keep in mind who these organizations are actually made up of. Look into their backgrounds. If they refuse to disclose their financial supporters, look into the backgrounds of the people sitting on the board of directors. I'll give you another example. Here's someone else on the board of directors of 4C, Sovata Meta. She is a translator and researcher at the Documentation Center of Cambodia. Let's go to DC Cam's website right here. Documentation Center of Cambodia. And let's see if they disclose their funding. Ah, here we go. This uh, website was funded in part by a grant, Documentation and Democracy from the United States Department of State. Here you have uh, the US flag, the State Department logo, and the US aid logo. So what are the chances of two people on the board of directors depending entirely on US government money and funding for all of their activities throughout the years. This is the game the US is playing now. They have all of these organizations. People are becoming more and more aware of it. Their, their strategy now is to post articles like this, denying the obvious, denying that Powen, who everyone in Thailand knows hates the monarchy and is working ceaselessly to overthrow it, to pretend that he was at a meeting and that the agenda wasn't to overthrow the monarchy, and to pretend that your 4C organization is independent. Uh, obviously, you're getting money from somewhere, but never actually listing, listing who. But then uh, for people that have the time and energy, just look at who these people are on the board of directors and see that every single one of them is, a, is an agent of US foreign policy not democracy, human rights, and freedom. That is just a smokescreen these people hide behind. Southeast Asia needs to take a close look at what Hong Kong did regarding US interference in their internal political affairs. Hong Kong passed a national security law. That national security law has restored peace and stability to Hong Kong. Southeast Asian nations individually and collectively as a regional bloc, ASEAN, the Association for Southeast Asian Nations can pass a variety of national security laws to cut off the US and European money flowing into the region, specifically to disrupt, divide, and destroy the region, to transform it into a battering ram to be used against China, when now the region collectively is benefiting by working with China. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing. It's free to do. It helps the channel grow. Check the video description below for all of the links that I referenced in this video, as well as for ways you can help support my work. I do not get a grant from the US government every year to fund all of my work. I depend on the generosity of my audience and you can support my work through Buy Me A Coffee and also Patreon to everyone who has been supporting, who has been generous. I greatly appreciate that. This work is impossible without that support. So again, thank you. And as always, thank you for watching.